So, Carol, thank you for coming today. Um, have you enjoyed it? It's great. Yeah. Very good. And lovely to see enthusiasm yeah. in the six forms. Yeah, I know, I know. And, and it's it's a buzz, isn't it, really? I, I'm sure you, you know that from the events that you've done over the years. So tell us yes. a little bit about what you've been doing down in Mid Wales. Okay. Um, we run two different days for six formers. One is in Bilth Wells, which is where my practice is, and the other one is in Welsh Pool, and it's held at the Welsh Pool Community Hospital. Um, the Welsh Pool one is organised by a Dr Michael Lewis as well, yeah. um, and Powys Health Board fund us to do it, which is great. We have around 25 six formers each time. Yeah. We have a system where we go through personal statements, interview techniques, we try and cover ethics and equivalently some mini medical interviews. But then we slightly change it and go through cases, real life patient cases, where um, the six formers learn about how their biology in school and chemistry has an impact on their learning so that they can get to grips with how someone gets heart failure, what the symptoms of heart failure are, that sort of thing. We then, in the afternoon, have um, either patients at my practice or we have actors come up from Cardiff University and they become simulated patients. Wow, so fantastic. they're the patients that the six formers then directly talk to and they get um, a way of looking at the impact of their illnesses on their lives. Right, okay. And so it's really important that six formers get to know um, sort of when someone's ill, how their life is affected dramatically often by it, yeah. including impact on their family, yeah. their local sort of society, community and so on. Yeah, so important. It is. And we also then say we have patients in the afternoon, we do more on ethics in the afternoon, we do health promotion sessions. So the six formers in groups of about four or five have to then produce a, um, a presentation for example on how to stop smoking when you're or how to encourage say a year six class to look at something like bullying in the yeah, class yeah. Um, another one will be on sexual education in the class in yeah. school drugs and that sort of thing and we get the six formers to create their own presentations Fantastic. in a short time and how long have you been doing this for now years, years um, many years started many. off in Monmouth um, I was Years and years ago, I was a lecturer um, at the University of Manchester, um, a medical school lecturer yeah. and also a GP. Yeah. We then moved to Wales and I got involved in doing more with Cardiff University, yeah. the communication skills department, but also teaching medical schools. And we actually, I was um, involved in setting up for school students to go into Cardiff to sit in observing the communication skills teaching yeah. at the university yeah. and then that sort of led on to thinking about what we could actually do within the schools themselves yeah. and then develop these days Fantastic. so I already knew the actors before and um, I guess you're seeing that coming to fruition now with people have you had any people come back to work in the area um, in fact not in Bilf yet because yeah. it's not been going but definitely medical students who yes. went to our, our sessions yeah. who then have gone on to medical school um, I've got yes feedback from years and what a lot of them have said is it's actually helped them with looking at problem based learning because that's one of the things that we do in the day yeah. sort of get them to have an idea of what yeah. it's like yeah. looking at cases yeah. and doing the equivalent of what they would be doing in some Absolutely. medical schools so the feedback has often been that it was a good taster yes. of what life then became like we, once they were at medical school and we've seen a, an element of that this morning didn't yes. we, with the ethical yes. um, dilemmas uh, and how to communicate that and, and in a sense um, medicine isn't separate from real life is it and, you know and yeah. what we try and do or what we tried to do this morning was to try and get them to think about the ethical connotations Absolutely. of, of scenarios both within and without medicine really so in a sense the, the case we discussed about um, you know the child protection issues um, yes. that can happen in, in any scenario in school as well can't Absolutely. it and, and I think a lot of the pupils found it interesting difficult maybe mm -hmm. but interesting to start thinking about that and what they would do about that mm -hmm. um, if they were a general practitioner mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so just to finish, if there's one thing that you could um, advise or tell uh, a pupil now about studying medicine and following their dream of studying medicine, what, what would that be? 
what medicine means to me. No, no, what would be the one per, word of advice or piece of advice that you could give them, if you like, um, if they were planning to follow a career in medicine and applying to med school? I think, look, at, look inside yourself and think what you enjoy doing. I think you have to be academic to a certain extent and have a good memory and be able to think on your feet. But I think if you enjoy talking to people, listening, being with people, that would be something I would say. Go with your heart and enjoy life because I think medicine is a career that you can continue to enjoy for the rest of your working life. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, I I guess I don't know whether that answers your question. (laughs) Brilliant. Anyway, thank you very much again for coming up and it's been great to have you here. Lovely. Okay.